Hello everyone, this is Omega Rider one Today we're going to be doing a review of Char's Counterattack. Now, you may not know right now, but I am indeed wearing red for this special occasion, considering Char is one of the subjects of the, of the film. If, if, uh, if you know anything about me, I was a big Gundam fan back in the late 90s and early 2000s when it was only Gundam Wing and, and G Gundam on. But not only that, but I actually lost interest in anime sometime between the periods of 2003 and I think about 2007. Uh, there really wasn't anything that I wanted to watch, but eventually I heard word of a, uh, I got word of a Gundam movie, but I didn't know that it was so old. I, you know, it's like, you know, from the 80s, didn't, you know, think that there was anything more, but that was because I was stupid back then. So, I went onto the internet and actually watched the whole movie through and loved it and got back into anime because of it. So I really do owe all of this, my reviewing, my website, my involvement with Gundam, everything I owe to Char's Counterattack. So, without further ado, I'll probably be reviewing... <laughs> no, I will be rev I will <laughs> finally review... The movie which restored my love for anime, Char's Counterattack. Plot. The year is 0093 of the Universal Century. With the death of Mon Khan, Neo Zeon has found a new leader in Char Aznable, the Red Comet. Assuming leadership of Neo Zeon, he plans to push humanity into space as a way to promote the emergence of new types, while sacrificing the Earth to do so. In his way stands Amuro Ray, now the lieutenant, now lieutenant in the Earth Federation's Londo Bell Task Force. These two long, long-time rivals will fight for the fate of the Earth and all of mankind one last time. Now, many people will say that this movie is either the greatest or the worst thing to grace the UC timeline. How they got the worst, I will never know. But the best, not exactly. Shark's Counterattack is a great premise, but doesn't explain it much unless you saw Zeta and Double Zeta. Zeta set Char up as a reformer, so why is he trying to destroy the Earth? Simple. The Earth Federation fucked up big time in Double Zeta, still doing nothing in the face of millions of people dying, especially after the Dublin uh, colony crash. Yeah, the, co the colony drop on Dublin. Along with a nice seven years to dwell on it and watch the Fetty some more, Though his fight with Amro is up for grabs. I usually presume that he's having the same dreams as Amro, but in reverse. But really, the whole Lala being his mommy figure kind of thing really threw me for a loop. That really is just, just weird. Either way, points off for lack of explanation. A 13 out of 20. Characters. Char's Counterattack brings back only three or... I actually did get this value wrong in the written review. One, two, three, four, four, yeah I think it was that, Amro, Shar, Bright, and Cameron are the ones who return. Otherwise, we don't see much of any other returning characters. Well, Lala reappears, but she's not a constant character. She's dead. So, but yeah, Sh Shars Counterattack brings back only three characters from the original Mobile Suit Gundam, despite this being centered on Shar and Amro's rivalry. Amro, Bright, and Shar return as good as ever. However, the new cast is nothing to be admired. Chan is the token Gundam girlfriend slash lover who, like many before and after, gets killed. She's as bland as a saltine, along with Kara Sue, whose only moment of glory is getting killed as well. Hathaway Noah is fucking annoying as hell, along with Quest Pariah, and the other new type, new type upstart. Hyuna and Gus is surprisingly good, though, as a character, though I, they don't really develop him enough to really truly sympathize with the guy. The only really good thing is the battle of ideologies between Shar and Amuro. This is one of the few times the viewer can root for either the hero or the villain. As both want what's best for humanity, they just have different ways of achieving it. <clears throat> A 5 out of 10. Art and animation. Near perfect. The mobile suits are beautiful to look at, with not a single eyesore amongst them. 
with good battles despite the rarity of them, and overall good character designs for the new cast. However, the CGI colony is a bit out of place. Though they put a lot of work into it, it just simply is a bit of a distraction. A 4.5 out of 5. Music. Simply amazing. The orchestral score fits the Gundam feel, and how the main theme was used was very interesting. How it appears in many different versions, like including a song with, of course, uh, including an actual song with vocals and a, and a group of people singing it. The crown jewel in, in this whole thing is actually TM Network's Beyond the Time, which is the ending theme music for the movie. The calm, and rela uh, the calm and relaxed feel and jazzy sound are simply too good to pass up for. Uh, for me at least. A 5 out of 5. Voice acting. Gundam always has good voice acting. I'm going to contradict myself in a later review. 10 out of 10. Overall, to summarize, Shars Counter-Attack is not a perfect film. However, I can recommend it despite its flaws as an entry film into the franchise. The main points I'd have to make are that if more influence from the Mobile Suit Gundam cast was used, was used along with maybe just a bit of exposition to what was happening with Shar, the film may have been better. Too much is left up to, to inference, and th thus it ruins the experience. I give Mobile Suit Gundam, Shars Counter-Attack, a 7.5 out of 10. Stay tuned for next time, when I actually do a review of Mobile Suit Gundam 0083 Stardust Memory. This is Omega Writer 1, and I'll be seeing you later.